The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Wednesday, April 24th. And um, so I'll be getting to the uh, the epistle lesson for, for this week today. Uh, as, I've, as I've noted, you know, we, we ordinarily do the epistle lesson on Tuesdays, but here in the season of Easter, we're doing them on Wednesdays. So the epistle lesson for this week is 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 21. Uh, there's actually an option where you could stop at verse 11. Um, but, I, you know, when we have options like that, I tend to... I tend to to, to choose to go ahead and have the whole thing because why not have more scripture? Uh, you know, it varies every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll choose not to, but uh, for the most part, I, I think, well, why, let's not, let's hear more of God's word, right? So, um, but in view of that, though, so this is a 21 verse reading, which means that there's a lot here. So I probably won't, won't really get to, to all of it, but uh, hopefully I'll hit some high points. And uh, uh, as I usually do, we'll be getting this out in the morning. So to follow the morning order, page 295 in the Lutheran service book. And we'll go ahead and start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, so First John chapter 4, uh, really the entirety of chapter 4, but we're going to begin at verse 1 here. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ, that, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, is from God. And every spirit that, confess, that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever does not, whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us his Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for uh, who, he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. In this commandment we have from him, Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Let us pray. Blessed God, our Heavenly Father, you um, have loved us by sending your Son into our flesh uh, to bear our sin and, and to be our Savior. And, and we give you thanks that you have loved us with such an eternal love and that you have, have sent your Son as, as that, uh, that propitiation for our sins. And, and we pray that you would, uh, would bless us in that love, that, that we too would love. And... Um, that we would that we would so know your love that uh, we 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 could not help but but manifest that into the world, and so manifest you in the world through that. Um, as we hear your word, the, this day we pray that you would bless us in that, and that in all things we would abide in that word and in that love through the same Jesus who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Um, so this. Uh, let me, let me start, I'm, I'm going to start with, with the, the test of spirits part, because I think this is important. Um, I think it's important in our, in, our, in our day and age especially, right? So, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. And, and as, as we hear that, uh, you know, I think that that's, you know, we, we kind of have this, 
this um, hesitancy to call a teaching false in our day. And you say, well, I believe this, but you believe that, that's okay. Well, what we see is that not every spirit who leads somebody to believe something is, is, uh, is a valid spirit, right? And, and you, can, you can hear that in, in the, the very spiritual sense that we might think of with the Holy Spirit and, and, um, and, 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 and demons and, and, and the like, that sort of thing. Or you can hear it in, in a more secular sense of like the spirit of the age, right? But, but in either case, uh, we recognize that, uh, that, and of course, as, as Christians, we do confess biblically that the Holy Spirit does speak to us through through the Scriptures, and so that's that's ultimately how we test the spirits, right? We test the spirits by the Word. Um, but the test that John gives here is that. Uh, well, so my my point is, first of all, that we, we we would test we would test everything according to the Word, and that which is inconsistent with the Word, we would acknowledge as such and and call it false, right? Um, which is not a popular view in our day, right? Um, I often think about how it, when when I was on vicarage, um, you know, I tend to I think I tend to have a, a fairly amicable personality. And when I was serving on my vicarage, uh, I was reading Titus chapter one, and it said, "Well, the, the call of a, an elder, uh, if I recall, it's, it's talking about elders at that point. Uh, the call of an elder, which would be essentially a pastor, as we would speak of it, is to uh, to to teach the word truthfully." and to rebuke those who contradict it, right? We have this call as the church to rebuke those who contradict it. So, in any case, uh, just making that point because it's, it's a, an important one to make. Um, likewise, within this context, what John is very specifically speaking about, I've mentioned before, he's talking about these people who don't believe that Jesus actually came into the flesh, that the goal of, of Jesus' work was to get our souls out of the bodies, so to speak, right? And so that's why he says... Uh, False prophets have gone in the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Interestingly, though, I think we can still understand that. If we understand that to mean that, that Jesus Christ is true God, but also true man, right? That he is the union of those true, two natures, which, which leads us to what we would call a Trinitarian theology, right? So in essence, if, you, if, you, if there is a spirit that confesses something other than a Trinitarian theology, uh, and of course John didn't have that word to use, that's a word that comes out of the church later, but, um, but, but we believe that it, it, it testifies to what, what the scriptures teach, and we could use a different word if we had to, but, but it, it works so well, right? So if you have something that, that contradicts a Trinitarian theology, uh, we have to understand that that's, that that has not come from God. Uh, every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. The, in fact, the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and is now in the world already. Now, this is the only place where uh, you actually have scripture using that word of Antichrist, um, but it's... Um, you know, it's something that we've kind of drawn. Uh, we, we make this connection to the man of lawlessness in Second Thessalonians. Uh, was it Second Thessalonians four? I think, um, or maybe it's two. I, I see a, a cross reference to, to two. It, anyway, Second Thessalonians, uh, you see, speak of the, the man of lawlessness. So, so anyway, I think that's a that's a fair application. Um, but, uh, but just kind of understanding um, that, that this is an opposition to Christ, and this is where the word comes from, and it really speaks specifically to something that's not not trinitarian here. Um, Okay, so then, then he gets into this, this language of, of, of uh, overcoming the world, and, um, and I'm, so this is where I'm going to kind of jump, jump ahead a little bit because of the length of the passage. Lo overcoming the world and, and recognizing sin and, and, and listening to, to the spirit of truth and loving, right? And, and, and so these, these, these uh, people that, that, that John is referring to, they were, they were called Gnostics. These Gnostics thought that you could do whatever you want in the body and it doesn't matter. You could treat people however you could do whatever, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But he, he makes the point, no, that, that there's, this, there's this way that we are actually called not to sin. And, um, and, 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 what, and this, this relates to love, right? Sin, the, the law, the, the film, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, we don't keep that. Right, so that's why love comes down to him first loving us, and, and that's what we see. That anyone who who um, let us love one another for love is from God. Uh, whoever loves has been born um, of God and knows God. And, and again, this means loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and loving neighbor. Right. So we have to not use a, a, a just kind of a broad definition of love, but a, a, a scriptural one. And um, but but so so God has loved us. He in fact this is love. Verse ten. Not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. I mentioned this this word of atonement. That's the same word uh, from First John two two, right? So so that uh, I, I 
think. Let me do, let me double check that. I was just looking at it, but um, uh, do, 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 do. yes, it's same word. So th this understanding that, that that Christ has atoned for our sins. We had that a couple weeks ago. Um, so because Christ has loved us, laid down His life for us, so we love one another. And then what we what we see is this this description of of, of a certainty of God's love, and and and, and this connects to. Here's where we'll get to the, the gospel lesson. This connects to us being in the vine of Christ, that, that it's through through our union with Christ, through our grafting into his branch, that we actually love. We love because he first loved us. Uh, in fact, this love is so certain, and, and this is over and against other teachings, but this love is so certain that, that, that John points us to it. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he has first loved us. So, so this, this certainty that God has loved us, he has sent Christ to die for us, and now he has loved us so much that now it's in that love that we love one another. And, and, and this is, John's very stark in this. Um, we, if anyone, verse 20, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. That's a full conviction of the law. Right? The gospel is Christ has died for you. Christ is the propitiation of your sins. God has loved you. Right, and then and then John comes back and says, "Yeah, but 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 if you if if you don't recognize how deeply effective that love is, then you don't have it, right?" And that's where we see just how amazing it is that we who can do nothing, right, apart from Christ, we can do nothing, as it says in the gospel lesson, that we who can do nothing are are joined to Christ by His love. And now enabled to love, right? Now that love doesn't earn our salvation. Christ has earned that. Christ has earned the salvation, the forgiveness of sins. But we are joined to that love, and and, and now we love. We love because He first loved us. Amen. All right. We continue with the uh, with the Lord's prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would forgive me all my... Uh, and I pray that... I'm sorry, I got interrupted in my brain. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.